wonderful name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How has been your day? The Lord bless you. You're welcome. Sweet, lovely Holy Spirit, we ask that please you come teach us your word this evening. Let it come like never before. Let it come with precision, insight, depth. Let it bring about transformation. Change that is that is obvious. Change that is synonymous to what you can do and you alone. Thank you for changing our stories and establishing us financially in the name of Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter number 25. From verse number 16. We're still looking at financial wisdom and integrity. Financial wisdom and integrity. Today we'll be looking at what it means to trade. what it means to trade. What does it mean to trade with your talent? Now, if you read it from verse number 15, the Bible says, and unto one he gave five talents, and unto another two, and, a, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straight away he took his journey. Verse 16. Then he. Then he. Now in teaching ministry. Language is very, very essential. The reason is because. When you are communicating. One particular statement based on tone and usage can mean a completely different thing. Can mean what? And so we pay attention to details when we are teaching. We pay attention to details when we're teaching. Now, he says he went on his journey. Then... He who had received the five talents did not wait for him to return. Neither did he wait for him to instruct him of what to do with the five talents that he gave to him. Praise the Lord. The Bible says he went and traded with the same and made them another five talents. Trading will always bring about a turnover. Trading will always result in a turnover. Depending on what you trade with. Some 30%, some 20%, some 50%, and in most cases, 100%. Trading is crucial we have financial wisdom is involved. 
until there is trading, there won't be changes. Until there is trading, you cannot increase. Until there is trading, you cannot increase. Hallelujah. I'd like us to define the word trade. I'd like us to define the word trade. The dictionary has said that the word trade is an occupation. Getting yourself occupied. Doing something with what is in your hand. Some people can afford to sleep from morning to night. Is that trading? Obviously they can be occupying themselves with sleep. There are people who have gotten themselves occupied with Nigerian movies. They are on Nollywood, they are on Hollywood, they are on, the, what do you call the other one? Bollywood. It's still a way of occupying yourself. Praise the Lord. Trading bothers on how you utilize time. Beyond physical form, beyond money, time is of great essence because time itself is a resource. Praise the Lord. Time is money. Beyond the physical cash, how you occupy your time is very critical in the school of wealth. Every single one of us have 24 hours. Every single one of us have 60 minutes. Every one of 60 minutes in one hour, 24 hours in a day, 60 seconds in every minute. 12. Sorry. Seven days in a week. We all have 30 days or 31 days or 28 days or 29 days, depending on the month. In every month. 365 or 366 in every year. Equal opportunity to everybody. God is impartial when it comes to a location of time. Telling about God is impartial when it comes to our location of time. But like the scripture says, after apportioning your time to you, he goes on his way. He travels into a far country to see how you will utilize the time, how you will occupy yourself with the time that is allotted you. If you will do business with the time or you go to sleep. You know, when we're talking about trading, what comes to mind is buying and selling. No. Trading begins with the, with the way you utilize time. Praise the Lord. Trading has to do with how you make use of your time. How you've engaged yourself. How you've occupied yourself. Are you occupying yourself acquiring knowledge? A day is coming that no, that knowledge will work for you. Are you occupying yourself acquiring skills? A day is coming the skills will work for you. 
whatever it is that you're occupying yourself doing, eventually that, if it is in the positive, a day is coming that which will engage yourself to will engage you positively. Read books. Go for professional courses. Study. Learn new skills. Occupy yourself. Make sure that no single moment of your life or time is wasted. You say, no, pastor. Me, I no be workaholic. I don't tire. Body no be firewood. I need to rest. Hello. Have you ever seen a man resting at the same time building? When was the last time you sleep and after waking up from your sleep you were paid? <laughs> Hello. Is it for sleeping for three hours you just earn twenty dollars? <laughs> you say what? Twenty dollars for sleeping for? I'm going to go in for seven hours. And as you wake up, this congratulations. You just got yourself $150. Beloved, when was the last time you dream, you sleep and dream somebody giving you money? And then you woke up, the money is under your bed, pillow. <laughs> if you see such a thing, in fact, Obanje is disturbing you. And in fact, such Obanje does not even exist. Praise the Lord. Telling about trading has to do with what? Occupying yourself. And I said it borders on the use of what? Time. It borders on the use of what? Time. Every one minute that is passing, a certain amount of money is going. Every second that is passing, a certain value of money is passing. Finances travels with time. They work with time. They function with time. And that's why when you're working in a particular place, at the end of the day, you're paid for the amount of time you're putting into that job. It is much abused this way. But in the Western world, you work, for, you, you work per hour and you're paid on hourly basis. And that's why you can afford to work, for, work in three or four places. You put in three hours here, you move to the other place, you work for another four hours, you move to the other place, you work for five hours, and then you can choose to work round the clock, you know, round the clock, sorry, and then as you're working, you're being paid. Are you getting what I'm saying here? You're paid for the number of hours you put into the job. They won't sack you. The thing is that if you work for two hours, you're worth two hours. Are you getting the point? You work for three hours, you're worth what? Three hours. You work for 30 minutes, you're worth 30 minutes. And so what they do is that because you're paid per hour, you're paid per minute, you're paid for the number of time you're spending in, at, your, at your job, they apportion you such job that is equivalent to the job that would be expected that one should do in 30 minutes. One hour. Three hours. And so should you not finish the job for three hours, then you haven't finished. You haven't finished your job for the day. So as you go in, you log in the time with your fingerprints. And your time starts instantly. And as you're done, you log out. Your time ends. 
and at the end of the month, you just go and pick up your cash. You don't query anybody because the time is what pays you. Tell your neighbor, what do you do with your time? Your true value in life is tied to it. What do you do with your time? It determines your real worth. It determines your real worth. It determines your real worth. What do you do with your time? He gave them, oh glory. I'd like us to go back to that scripture. We're going to come back to the definition of the word trade. We're just taking the word occupation. Which has to do with occupying yourself. In other words, the utilization of your timing or time. Praise the Lord. Now, when you go back to scripture, the Bible says, Then he... Watch this. Pastor Precious, come here. Please watch this. I'd like you to pay attention to what I'm going to show you right now. You are the master. Come, come, come. Now, look at her. I am the one with the five talents. The one to receive the five talents. Give it to me. Turn and then go your way. As she turned to go her way, I also turn instantly and begin to engage the five talents. Then, he that received the five talents went and traded the Bible didn't say, then he that received the five talents went and kept the talent, protected and preserved it, and after two, three, four, five days, he sat down and thought of what to do. And then come up with an idea. And at that instant, a week or three or four or five or six was up. And then he suddenly realized, that he ought to have invested that five talents in Okrika business. What does that tell you? Opportunity should meet with preparation in your life. You didn't hear me. What does that tell you? Opportunity should do what? Should meet with preparation in your life. Whenever opportunity meets with preparation, results become inevitable. Results becomes inevitable. You don't struggle to get results. The reason is because you were ready waiting for the opportunity. There was a man at the pool of Bethesda who had been there for 38 years waiting for someone to come stay water, you know, push him into the water when the angel comes stare in the water. You know the story very well. In this particular day, you know, according to the story, the Bible has it that every time the angel comes down to stay the water, before the man gets to the well, another person had jumped in and got his healing. Telling about unpreparedness. You can imagine what unpreparedness can do to a man. 38 good years wasted for nothing. A child of 38 years is an adult. He owns a building of his own. He has a car of his own. He has a life of his own. But 38 good years of a man's life was just thrown into the West Bean. Just like that. For reason of unpreparedness. Hear me. Whether we like it or not. The angel is always coming. And the angel will always come. 
But should the angel come, where will the angel meet you? Will he meet you ready to jump into the water? Or will he meet you preparing to get to the mouth of the well? For I can assure you that for those people who jump into the well at the instant of the staring of the water, we're already at the mouth of the well waiting for the water. And for those who are waiting for people to help them in, we're yet to get to the mouth of the well. Because if all you do is lie just at the, at the, at the mouth of the well, at the staring of the water, all you need to do is roll in. Roll in. Comfort is the greatest enemy of wealth. Comfort is the greatest enemy of wealth. Did you hear what I said? What is the greatest enemy of wealth? Comfort. You cross your legs, rest your back on your couch. Sipping a drink and time is going. While you're doing that, another person is making a hundred naira, additional hundred naira. In the next two hours, while you're dead, gisting and looking at the screen from hundred naira, that person had made 500 naira. You're comfortable, but he is making the money. Eventually, when the enemy shows up, you will be the one to go loaning from the one who had no comfort but had the money. Well, you had the comfort but without the money. Nothing destroys destiny like comfort. Praise the Lord. The Bible didn't say that God has given us comfort. He said he's given us a comforter. <laughs> Amen. What does that mean? Don't worry, I'm with you. Go ahead, keep doing it. I'm with you. Don't worry. God didn't give man comfort. God gave us comforter. The reason is because once you're comfortable, you're grounded. You've reached your plateau. You can't go beyond that level. But so long as you're not, you, 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 you are not comfortable, you will, be, you will struggle to do more. You will strive to do more. And with the help of the comforter, you will achieve better. Because when you're supposed to be tired, when you're supposed to throw in the towel, the comforter will say, right on, I'm by your side. 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 I want to believe that we should have come to a point where we can ask ourselves, why is it that God didn't give us comfort but give us comforter? Because comfort will destroy us, but the comforter will make us. Comfort will destroy us, but the comforter will produce us. Comfort will destroy us, but the comforter will strengthen us. Comfort will destroy us, but the comforter will impact on us. Comfort will destroy us, but the comforter will energize us. Comfort will destroy us, but the comforter will prosper us. We're still talking about treading. The man at the pool of Bethesda was comfortable. And so he lost 38 good years. Yet the comforter was always coming. And found him not at the mouth of the well. But for everyone he found at the mouth of the well, they return with a benefit. They return with a profit. They return with a gain. Build on your strength. Don't build on men. That man at the pool of Bethesda had an equal opportunity to have treaded 
that time and return with benefits. But he banked on men when he ought to have banked on his ability to roll into the water. Listen to me, sir. It does not matter the level of your own strength, the level of your ability. It is synonymous to what you can do. It is synonymous to what God has created you to do. It is synonymous to what God has prepared you to achieve in life. Am I talking to you? Banking on others' ability, banking on the strength of others is the greatest undoing of your life. Because 90% of the time when you need them the most is when you will never have them. There were men who were in the same situation with that man at the, at the pool of Bethesda. But leaving that pool was critical to them. And so they lived. They literally hung by the mouth of the well. And because this other man was comfortable, he couldn't even calculate the timing of the visitation of the angel. When others who are desperately in need of their freedom had calculated, calculatively spelled out at what time and at what season, at what moment does the angel come? And so when it gets to that timing, they, 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 got, they get to the mouth of the well. It could, it, if he doesn't come now, he might come in the next few seconds. If he doesn't come in the next few seconds, he might come in the next few hours. Let me rather die here until he comes. And guess what? Most of them had thought the angel had come and jump into the water only to be pulled out of the water because the angel didn't come. But you know what? It is better you fall into the water hoping the angel has arrived than be left on the, on the mouth of the well hoping the angel hasn't come yet. Am I talking to you? In those days, there is this game we used to play. Two people will stand and be flinging a rope and then you're in the middle skipping sometimes you anticipate the rope is not close by the rope packs you and then you fall you fell and then you're thrown out but it is better you keep jumping and not anticipate i don't even understand what i'm saying here you just keep jumping and as you're jumping unconsciously the, the rope gets under your legs and you keep winning you keep winning that hoping that the rope hasn't come and then the rope packs you and you're out of the game in the school of wealth risk is everything did you hear me in the school of wealth what is everything risk is everything i repeat in the school of wealth, risk is everything. Rise up to your feet. When we come tomorrow, we're still going to be dwelling on treading. Did you learn something today? Were you challenged? Do you now understand how important your time is? What were you supposed to do with your time? Get yourself occupied. Get yourself occupied. Get yourself occupied. For money is tied to timing. Money is tied to time. Every one minute that passes, your money is going. How much of your time you're able to utilize effectively is how much you can, how much you're worth per time effectively. Praise the Lord. When we've not gone into buying and selling yet, we're still dwelling on trading. I don't know, you understand what I'm saying here? By the time we get to the bottom of all these things, you understand what finances is or what financial wisdom is. Are you learning something? You understand what financial wisdom is.